this set of notes is to go with Chapter 4, Carbon and the Molecular Diversity of Life. The key to an atom's chemical characteristics is its electron configuration. Carbon has six electrons, two in the first electron shell and four in the second electron shell. The second electron shell holds eight electrons, so carbon completes its valence shell by sharing its four electrons with other atoms in covalent bonds so that eight electrons are present. These covalent bonds may include single and double covalent bonds to carbons and other atoms. This property of carbon, the ability to form sta four stable covalent bonds, is called tetravalence. And that means that each carbon atom in a molecule can serve as an intersection point from which branching can occur in as many as four directions. The tetravalence of carbon is the key that makes carbon the foundation for large, complex biological molecules. A carbon with single bonds to other atoms, like that which, those which occur in methane, causes a molecule to assume a tetrahedral shape. A carbon which is double bonded to other atoms has a planar shape, causing a molecule that's flat. This is important to understand because molecules are three-dimensional entities and the shape of a molecule often determines its function. Chains of carbons form the skeletons of most organic molecules. These skeletons can vary in length and shape, occurring as straight, branched, or ring structures. Hydrocarbons are a type of carbon-containing organic molecule containing just carbons and hydrogens. Atoms of hydrogen are attached to the carbon skeleton wherever electrons are available for covalent bonding. Hydrocarbons are the main components of petroleum and are not prevalent in living organisms except in fatty acid chains. The long tails of fatty acids are nonpolar hydrocarbons, and this feature is what gives fats and oils their hydrophobic or water fearing character. Due to carbon's versatility, organic molecules can occur in different variations, or isomers, which are compounds that have the same number of atoms of the same elements but have different structures. There are three types of isomers of which you should be aware. Structural isomers. These differ in the covalent arrangements of their atoms and the location of double bonds. Geometric isomers. These are compounds with the same atoms, but which differ in their arrangement around a double bond. Enantiomers are compounds that differ from each other in their spatial arrangement around an asymmetric carbon. This results in molecules that are mirror images of each other and cannot be superimposed on each other. The ability of carbon to bind to atoms in different positions explains the long, goes a long way towards explaining carbon's versatility, but it's not the whole story. The properties of organic molecules depend not only on the arrangement of the carbon skeleton, but also the chemical groups attached to that skeleton. Here's a picture of the sex hormones estradiol and testosterone. These are all hydrocarbon rings, but what we're looking at here are the functional groups attached to those rings. Various chemical groups can replace the hydrogens that might otherwise bind to the carbon skeleton, participating in chemical reactions or determining the structure and therefore the function of the organic molecule. Because of their role in determining the functional properties of an organic molecule, these chemical groups are called functional groups. Each functional group participates in chemical reactions in a characteristic way, thus giving defined properties to their associated carbon skeleton. Some functional groups that you're going to need to know.
you're going to need to know are the hydroxyl groups, carbonyl group, and carboxyl group, as well as the amino, sulfhydryl, and phosphate groups. The hydroxyl group makes molecules polar. It's found in alcohols and sugars, and it helps in the it helps polar substances to dissolve in water. Carbonyl groups are characteristics of ketones and aldehydes, like sugars. Sulfite carboxyl groups are found on carboxylic acids, like fatty acids and sugars. And the carboxyl group confers acidic properties, donating hydrogen ions to solution. Amino groups are found on amino acids. They confer basic properties, picking up hydrogen ions from the surrounding solution. Sulfhydryl groups are found in the R groups of some amino acids, especially cysteine, and they're important in the cross-linking of cysteines on proteins, forming disulfide bridges. A phosphate group is characteristic of organic phosphates like ATP, DNA, and phospholipids. It contributes a negative charge to a molecule, making it more likely to participate in chemical reactions. It also has the potential to react in an exergonic re hydrolysis reaction with water, releasing energy. If you recall, this was the reason that ATP is the energy currency of the cell. You'll notice also as you study cellular respiration and photosynthesis that phosphate groups are often added to sugars before breaking them down or to other molecules before adding hydrogens to them to, by increasing their chemical reactivity.